researchers may soon be able to test one of Stephen Hawking's most controversial theories. In the 1970s, Hawking proposed that dark matter, the invisible substance that makes up most matter in the cosmos, may be made of black holes formed in the earliest movements of the Big Bang. Now three astronomers named Natarajan, Nico Capolotti and Gantara Singer have developed a theory that explains not only the existence of dark matter but also the appearance of the largest black hole in the universe. Hey friends, why is James Webb Space Telescope so important? Because this telescope could produce data needed to finally assess Hawking's famous notion. Dark matter makes up over 80% of all the matter in the universe, but it does not directly interact with light in any way. It just floats around being massive, affecting the gravity within galaxies. It is tempting to think that black holes might be responsible for this dark matter. Though black holes are famously dark, so filling a galaxy with black holes could theoretically explain all the observations of dark matter. But in the modern universe, black holes form only after massive stars die, then collapsed under the weight of their own gravity. So making black holes records many stars, which records a bunch of normal matter. And scientists know from the calculation of the early universe how much normal matter is in the universe. In the early universe, first hydrogen and helium formed and there simply is not enough normal matter to make all the dark matter, astronomers have observed. Hey friends, in this situation in 1971, Stephen Hawking suggested that black hole formed in the chaotic environment of the earliest movements of the Big Bang. According to Hawking and Carr, in the first fraction of a second after the Big Bang, tiny fluctuation in the density of the universe may have created an undulating landscape with lumpy regions that had extra mass. These lumpy areas would collapse into black holes, and these black holes are called the primordial black holes. Hawking suggested that these primordial black holes might be responsible for dark matter. Friends now researchers suggest if most of the primordial black holes are born at a size roughly 1.4 times the mass of Earth's sun, they could potentially account for all dark matter. Notarajan and her colleagues say their new model shows that the first stars and galaxies would have formed around black holes, and those primordial black holes would have the ability to grow into supermassive black holes by feasting on gas and stars in their vicinity, or by merging with other black holes. Really, it is a challenging problem to prove the nature of dark matter and the formation and the growth of black holes, and to resolve them in one fell swoop. So the James Webb telescope is too important, because it will find the first galaxies that form in the early universe, and it will also see stars forming planetary systems. If the dark matter is comprised of primordial black holes, more stars and galaxies would have formed around them in the early universe. And the James Webb telescope will be able to see that early stars, galaxies and universes. And friends LISA, laser interferometer space antenna will be able to pick up gravitational wave signals from early mergers of primordial black holes. Friends, according to Hussinger, if the first stars and galaxies already formed in the so-called dark ages, waves should be able to see the evidence of them. So friends, we can hope that two observations should give astronomers enough information to piece together the story of the first stars and potentially the origins of the dark matter.